So like last time, let me go over the concept of the proof of contraposition, our newest toolkit, or newest tool in our toolkit of proving. Now, it's also called contraposition in the book, but on other resources and stuff like that are going to call it contrapositive. So just a heads up with that. Now, the definition of this is it's an indirect proof of the same claim that you and I want, but here's the thing. The form of it is actually going to be, well, a little bit different. We're going to take a different route to prove basically the same thing. Now, I don't know if you remember, I'm really kind of moving to the table here, that P implies Q does equal the contrapositive. You've heard that word before. Here's another item that we're pulling from material that we've learned from before. It's the exact same setup when it comes to the values. So in this case, we're going to worry about our negated Q, and then we're going to look for our negated P to see if they were both true, and then we can move on from there. Now, so that's the idea, because again, they are equivalent. So we're going to take a different route to prove the same equivalency of our P implies Q. So when we do that, we're going to assume not Q or negated Q is true in our hypothesis. Notice the same three steps again. We're going to do our argument, which you can use your negated Q to show that negated P is true. And then therefore, once we find our negated P, then we can use that in our conclusion to say, hey, we found it, put our stamp on it, and go from there. How does this work out? So first of all, in our table, which you're very familiar with here, again, I'm going to focus on really first the, the P implies Q and then not Q implies P. That is our contrapositive that we talked about before. So notice again, they line up exactly as they should because they are equivalent when it comes to the results. Now, I'm gonna go to the two white sections here because frankly, when our negated Q is false, we don't want that situation. We want it to be true, so that's why we can go ahead and eliminate those two possibilities that we have. So now we're left with two left. Let's do the bottom one first. Here when we have our negated Q, we're gonna use that overall setup and once we find our negated P, then we know we have a true. And again, because of that, we know that both of those are true. Then we found our original direct way of doing it, which is P implies Q. That's what we're hoping for as a bottom scenario. You know what's coming next. This is what we hope it doesn't happen, but it does happen once in a while where we just can't prove our negated P for our second half of our equation. And that means, well, we can't do our conclusion that we found that we can prove it to be true. So it does happen, but this is the one we're hoping not to have. 